Good morning. Good morning. Can we stand for the reading of the Word of God? Our scripture text this morning is from Acts, the third chapter. The 12th through the 19th verse. When you have it, can you say praise the Lord? So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we, made, we had made this man walk? The God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our Father, glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made the, this man strong, whom you see and now know. Yes, the faith which, which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know, I know, I now, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But who, but those things which God foretold by the mouth of His prophets, that the, that by the mouth of the, of His prophets, that the Christ would be surrendered he has thus fulfilled amen? amen this is the word of God and I do believe it is true the grass withers and the flowers fade but the word of our God shall stand forever
the church and another way that we know that God is real is because he is a prayer answering God amen <laughs> hallelujah the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing and so as we go to before we go to our prayer period this morning we certainly want to lift up these praise reports on last week we were praying for several deacons of our church and we are happy to report this morning that Deacon Steve Haynes Deacon Tony Williams and Deacon Rodney Van Hook are all recovering from successful procedures. Amen. Along with Miss Vanetta McAllister, who is also recovering. 
Our prayers are with Henry Peebles, who has been released into rehab on this week. Amen. Can we give God praise? For our hospitalizations, we are praying with Stephanie Lewis, Beverly Tolliver, and baby Rylan Ace Patton. For our bereavements this morning, continue prayers for Patricia Jefferson and family who funeralized her nephew, Stacy Gavin, Kiana Neely and family who funeralized her grandmother, Georgiana Neely, Sam Everett and family in the passing of his brother, Steve Everett, Tori Handy and family in the passing of his cousin, Lucille Mays, Minister Sonia McClendon and her entire family in the passing of their cousin, Tara Bernice White, and Annetta Roberts in the passing of her mother and our faithful Shalom family member, Mother Pauline Bolden. Family, we do ask that you pick up a complete copy of our prayer concerns in the rotunda, that you will pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ in your own personal prayer time. Let's keep one another lifted. Amen. Our choir is going to lift our hearts in song, after which we will be led to the throne.
not already standing, let us stand as we go to God in prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, our Father, how we magnify and how we bless your holy and righteous name. We really stand in awe of who you are. On this morning, we have no reason to be discouraged, but every reason to be encouraged because you are the healer of our soul. Truly, you are the bomb in Gilead. And even more, you are the bomb in our lives. And by your stripes, one good Friday, your word says we are healed. So as we continue to rejoice in the reality of our healing and in your resurrection power, we thank you for the faithfulness demonstrated in Christ Jesus. We are saved today, not because we've been so good, but because of your faithful action in Jesus Christ, who died for our sins one Friday, but early Sunday morning rose for our justification. We recognize afresh, God, that it's not by power, it's not by might, but it is by your spirit. And so, God, we depend on the power of your Holy Spirit afresh on this day for the salvation of every person in worship on this morning. For families experiencing the loss of a loved one, we pray for your healing, that you'd be the mender of a broken heart, that you'd be the lifter of a bowed down head, that you would ease troubled minds. For our family members who are dealing with sickness, we pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, for your healing power, again, to be made known in the lives of our family members. We know, oh God, you're able to do it according to your will and according to your way. We give you all the glory, God, for how you've brought us. We give you the glory for how you've kept us, how you've opened doors for us, even, oh God, how you've healed our bodies as we look back over our lives. We recognize it's been because of your faithfulness and your new mercies that we are not consumed. We pray, oh God, that as we humble ourselves and seek your face, that you will look all over this land and you will dispatch your healing power in the name of Jesus. Father God, we lift up your word on the day. We pray, oh God, that you would bless the proclaimer and the hearer Anoint us, O oh God, that we would be not only hearers of your word, but doers as well. We pray for our schools. We pray for our government. We need you in our communities, God. We need you everywhere. You are a very present help in the time of trouble. And so we ask your blessings, O oh God, even on our pastor, Sister Clark, O oh God, that you would anoint him afresh. Continue, O oh God, to undergird him and strengthen him for the journey ahead. Thank you, O oh God, for how he leads and how he continues to serve your people everywhere and then father for every family represented in this place on the day we cast all our cares at your feet because your word says that you truly care for us and so we have no reason to doubt you we thank you now for healing and we thank you now for victory that we have in christ jesus and we'll be mindful to give your name the glory the honor and the praise in jesus name we pray and give you thanks amen and thank god
on today. Thank God for today. Amen. Certainly thank Pastor Clark for this opportunity to my brothers and sisters who share in this preaching ministry and to all in their respective places. It is good for us to be here. Amen. Um, you know, they tell me I don't have a mic right, but I, you know, it's something about where I, it, okay. So here we go. <laughs> the text today is found in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. First Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. And um, those of you who have already gotten there, you probably say, that's the whole chapter. <laughs> it is. <laughs> So I'll try to go at a pace that, you know, you won't say, good Lord, when is she going to let us sit down? And it reads as follows. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now. I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love, these three, these three abide, and the greatest of these is love. Amen. Amen. Did I do okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> This is the word of God, and I do believe that it is true. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. As I was going through this and I kept trying to come up with a title, which I'm like really hard pressed often to come up with the title, um, I was hoping this one would fit the body of love. The body of love. Now in Corinthians, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth to address some concerns they had asked him about. He founded the church there, and after about a year and a half, he left to do some traveling. And since he was their pastor, naturally they wanted to get some guidance from him on how to be living as this Christian body because Christianity was so new to them. But of course, you and I today would probably not identify with some of the issues they had. 
Some were claiming different preachers were their pastor because they had baptized them. Since they were of different social and economic status, some did not really associate with those who had less or they mistreated them or looked down on them, especially concerning the Lord's Supper. And then they had this problem with hairstyles. But it's not really clear to me if it was with the women and the men or just the women or just the men, but they had a problem. And then there was certainly an almost across the board problem with who had the better spiritual gifts and how they were used. But I know we don't have that problem. But Paul had to let the church at Corinth know that no one gift is the all in all. Having one gift and not the other does not make anyone more or less in the body of Christ. The point is this, there is one spirit which gives all gifts and the gifts are given to do two things, glorify God and edify the body. Build up the body of Christ. In chapter 12, Paul goes over the gifts of the body and then ends by saying, but I will show you a more excellent way. In other words, the body of Christ is made up of many parts or gifts, if you will. And each one is necessary for the body to operate effectively and efficiently. The danger is that we can get caught up in so much doing and being all of what we think we are. But if we don't have love, we're missing the mark. More than any gifts, whatever they may be, if they are not operating out of a spirit of love, The gifts are useless. And because not everybody has the same gift, it stands to reason that we need each other in order to be a part of the body. There has to be an object of our love, though. Now, this love that Paul is talking about is not the love that we toss around so loosely, you know, Now, I will say that I love some greens and cornbread. I do. (laughs) Maybe you might love a big juicy hamburger with fries on the side. Or love to watch that show every Tuesday, got the TV on. Or love that sweater or that outfit. It's my favorite. But this love that Paul is talking about is agape love. The love that God has shown through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That love. This is the love that is not selfish, but selfless. The love that is patient, kind, not envious, not boastful, not arrogant or rude not even irritable or resentful. This love rejoices in the truth, not the wrong. This love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. This love never ends. This love is the love that God has for us And it's the love that Jesus commands we have for one another. So 
you know, I guess God knew. This is my little, you know, thinking. Some of y'all may know I kind of think out there. But I guess God knew that we could get caught up and bogged down, either thinking that we're more than we are or feeling intimidated because our gift is not what somebody else has. I love singing with the choir down there. <laughs> but if you put me up here, like Crystal or one of them, it, it, mm, 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 mm. I think a lot of you would be saying, mm, mm, that ain't her gift. That ain't her gift. But I'm not intimidated by that because I know that God has gifted me with something. And if I just stay here in community with other like-minded believers, my gift will make room for me. Your gift will make room for you operating in the body as a part of the body, which is the body of love. Whether we prophesy, speak in tongues, or know the mysteries of the heavenly places, those things will come to an end. Our understanding of God even as revealed through Jesus Christ, is limited and imperfect because we are finite. We are limited. We are not perfect. And we can only see and understand so much as the creature. As we continue to strive for the excellence of a better way, as we continue to strive to live out that love for God, our neighbors and ourselves, at best, we can only see bits and pieces along the way. But one day, we will see the one who loves without end, the one who shows us love, the one who is our creator. We will see God face to face, and we will see everything as God sees it, even ourselves. But until that time, we have faith, hope, and love. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I had to translate that for me. My little brain came up with this. Faith is the action of our hopes. Our actions are based on our trust in God, that God is who God says God is. God is sovereign, God is almighty, God is magnificent, God is loving, God is kind, God is merciful, God is righteous, God is all we need, God is love. And God has shown us through Jesus Christ and Jesus has empowered us with his Holy Spirit to be the kingdom building church that he's calling for. But I won't say we this time, I'll just say me. If I'm, I hope that's not mine. If we're honest about it, we know that our faith wavers from time to time, okay? I, my faith, okay? Sometimes I might lose faith that certain things will ever happen. And so, what? If you're like me, what do we do? We just stop. We just stop. But when we have faith, just even the size of a grain of a mustard seed, mustard seeds are so tiny, even if we have that kind of faith. We keep working. We keep striving. We keep marching. We keep proclaiming no matter what it looks like. 
I was listening to the radio the other day, and then, you know, there all this political stuff that's in the atmosphere and, you know, that we live with, and you turn on anything, you're going to hear about it. And then I start reflecting about George Floyd, uh, Lamont, Avery, if I'm messing up their names, it's not on purpose. But the point is, we talk about Michael Brown, then we go back to slavery, and somebody the other day said the way that they want to... Uh, uh, change the things is pretty soon people of color will be moving back 400 years and I started thinking like Lord Jesus when will it end when will it stop but as the body of believers as the faith community we have made gains we have gotten voter registration drives we have made civil rights an issue to be reckoned with we have given people personal dignity the church has been the backbone of our culture and our society here in the black community ever since it was a when or a where as my mama used to say and so we got to look like Job and say, all the days of my appointed time, all the days that God gives to me to serve, all the days, I'm going to wait until my change comes. And my change going to come because I trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. Acknowledge him in all my ways and let him direct my path. Amen. 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 But one thing about this letter that Paul wrote that got me to thinking about it is what strikes me is how much emphasis we put on what is not eternal. And going back to that same thought that I had the other day, I can remember going down to Mississippi with my mother to visit my grandmother. They made the mistake to send me to the store by myself in the Delta. And this was only about 20 years ago. I walk in the store, they selling single cigarettes on the counter, a can of tuna fish cost $2 and something. I mean, this is 20 years ago for a can of tuna. The produce is absolutely outrageously priced. And me being me, I'm looking, they got to be crazy to think somebody going to pay this. But the store they sent me to was on this side of the tracks. You understand what I'm saying? This side of the tracks. Not the grocery store where, excuse me, y'all, but I'm going to get real, where Mr. Charlie shop. Okay? Not there where the tuna fish was 89 cent a can, but where we live. It's two dollars and something a can. And I'm just in the store just losing my mind looking at these prices. And all of a sudden I turn around and there's my bro uh, cousin Henry. And I say, Henry, what you doing here? Uh, they thought better about sending you here by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and the other day I started thinking that there is a legacy that we share. There's a legacy of persons who were persecuted and beaten and not only enslaved, but downtrodden and treated as less than human. We have that legacy, but we can get in our cars, we can live in our homes, we can go on our jobs because of what they did. And so all I could think is do not grow weary in well-doing. That's the love that is patient and kind, that does not envy or boast and is not proud. The love that is not rude or self-seeking because if I'm doing it for me, I'm gonna do it for me and you, hey, you better get yours. But this kind of love that's not easily angered, that rejoices in the truth, that's the love that never ends. 
It's the love that won't stop just because we make mistakes. It's the love that won't stop just because we think we're not making progress. It's the love that won't stop because of somebody else mistreating us. It's the love that goes on and on and on. It's the love that will make you do the right thing even when you want to do the wrong thing. It's the love that is born out of knowing that none of us are perfect and we always live to get it right. And we serve a God who is a God of more than second chances. <laughs> this love never ends. It's agape. The love that God has for us is the love that God has put in us. God's love always protects. God's love always trusts. God's love always hopes and always perseveres. That's why Paul could say, now faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love because God is love. Now, this passage is used a lot in marriage ceremonies, and that's all good, but it may leave a more romanticized view of God's love. Mm. Now, I'm not afraid, well, actually, I am, really, because some of us choose to love. We choose to love who we like, who likes us, you know, those people we get along with, those people are song, you know, the same social status, you know. Certain people at our job, we don't like everybody, you know, but you know, we, we like all of those and, and you know, we show them a little graciousness, especially if we're trying to move up to where we think they are. But this agape love is the love that calls us not only to love us or to love those who love us, this love calls us to love our enemies and even pray for those who despitefully use us. That's love. Mm. And I don't know about you, but for me, that kind of love is hard. But if we hang our hopes on what Paul says, or any person, we're looking in a mirror dimly. We have somebody greater than Paul to not only tell us about love, but to show us this great love. And his name is Jesus. The one who hung, bled, and died for our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whoever, rich, poor, fat, skinny, light skin, dark skin, good hair, wavy hair, kinky hair, no hair, could sing, can't sing, could dance, can't dance, got money, ain't got no money own a home, written a home, got a mortgage, got bills due, got bills passed due. God so loved the world and I just want to take a side step here, you know, on the side. You know, God still loves uh, the used-to-be's. 
the woods, like the dope heads, the uh, weed smokers, the alcoholics, the drug addicts, the cocaine sniffers. I heard the other day, black folks don't do meth. The meth users. God loves the world, everybody. And God has put us within the body to operate as the body with the gifts that God has given us, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we can do kingdom building. Not when we come in here all the time, but it's when we leave outside these doors. Amen. And I'm glad and I'm proud to say that I serve a God who has a pastor that serves the people to say it's more to do. The kingdom of God is about building the kingdom of God in love. Look at the health fest we have, the biggest in, known in this area the food pantry, the other things that we do. We got tutors in the schools. And if it's Shalom Church, City of Peace, you can't find a ministry to serve through, you're not looking. Last count, now I admit this was before the, the uh, pandemic when I did a serious count, but the last count, we got some like 26, 29 ministries here at Shalom. And just think how much we can do for God when we serve with a motive of love, when we operate in the gifts that God has given us. Not looking behind us, not looking over our shoulder trying to see who can do what we can do better than we can do it, and not thinking that we can do what we can do better than somebody else can do it, but understanding that God has blessed each and every one of us as a part of the body of Christ. We are a body of love, and that's our object for serving. Yeah. Yeah. God wanted to be reconciled to us, and in his love, he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't have to worry about that everlasting life. Sometimes I wonder if I'm wrong. It's not that I take God's love for granted, but what I do know is what I do for Christ and only what I do for Christ will last. And if I've given him my life, he can take care of that. Because I remember over in Matthew where it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. And I could tell you this, that my father who loves the world, check this out, we don't have to be so competitive owns it all. But God wanted to be in relationship with us. God wants us to trust him, to let him take care of us. Isn't that just amazing? And it's so freeing. It's such a freedom to realize that I don't have to worry. He said in his word, don't worry about what you're going to put on. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about it. I got you. That's what they say now, ain't it? I got you. I got you. God says, I got you. Because his love has reconciled us back to him. He saw that we just couldn't do it on our own. And he realized that he had to show us this love. And I remember my mama used to say, I can show you better than I can tell you. So God wrapped himself up in this human flesh. He humbled himself to be born of a virgin, wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. And they named him Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, the glory of God, full of grace and truth and love. And when the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the religious leaders of the day couldn't stand the light that he shone on their darkness and the darkness of the world, y'all know what they did. They drug him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They beat him. They spit on him. But Jesus never said a mumbling word. And when they stretched him wide and hung him high, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he hung his head and he died. He loved us so much that he died for every time we miss the mark, for every unkind word, every unkind and selfish deed, he died. For this sin sick world, he died. That's love. But God wants to be reconciled in relationship with us so much so that when they buried Jesus in a borrowed tomb three days later God got him up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands I love him today I love him because he first loved me I love him today because when I look at my own life I'm still making mistakes. But when I survey that wondrous cross, the cross where my hand, Savior hung, bled, and died, for the wretch that I am, I get joy when I think about just how much he loves me. I get joy. Mama couldn't do it. Daddy couldn't do it. Pastor can't do it. Friends and family can't do it. Can't nobody love me like Jesus. Nobody love me like Jesus. Jesus will love you even when you don't love yourself. He'll give you a new attitude, a new way of walking, a new way of talking. I know he will. He laid down his life so that we could see just how much he loves us so we can trust in that love and be kingdom builders. He loves it for us to be in relationship with him. He wants us to love one another. God loves the world. God loves the church. God loves you, you, you. And God loves me. God loves so that we can be the body. And being a part of the body, when we look in that mirror dimly, we can see just how undone we really were. And as for me, I'll just share this with you and I'll take my seat. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, I was sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, hallelujah, heard my despairing cry from the waters, lifted me, and now safe am I. Wanna know what lifted me? Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. He'll lift you by his love. Out of the angry waves, he's the master of the sea. Billows 
will him obey. <laughs> love will lift you. How do I know? Because love lifted me. Faith, hope, love, abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. There is nothing greater than love. I love my church, for there is nothing better than the body of love. Amen. <laughs> God praise for that for that powerful word delivered through God's minister minister Janice Skurlock this morning the body of love come on let's thank God for it this morning family after proclamation comes invitation if you are here today and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we extend this invitation to the body of love to you today. Maybe you are here and you have accepted Jesus, but you do not have a church home. The preacher said this morning to stay in community and your gift will make room for you. Love, amen. The doors of the church are open.
that a man should lay down his life for a friend. The Bible simply says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. We're going to take one more round. And if you are here today, we ask that you come at this time. God praise for this one who has come again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, family. All right. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our ushers are coming at this time. It's offering time, Shalom. You may call the office at 314-653-2300. Drop off or mail your check to the church at 5491 North Highway 67, Florissant, Missouri, 63034. Through Realm via the church website at www.shalomccop.org. Or you may text S. C C O P to seven three two. Thank you. 